Well, this hour, we'll take your calls with Melissa Gates Perry. It, she'll also do readings. I'll pass on her your name to her, and what she needs is a specific question, whatever it may be. Or you can also just talk with her about what we've been talking about. Her book is called Beyond Humans. And welcome back to Coast to Coast. George Nori with you, Melissa Gates Perry with us. Her website is her name, linked up at coasttocoastam.com. The book is called Being Humans. The subtitle, Good News for the Next Hundred Years on Planet Earth, A Channeled Guide to Humanity and Its Growing Place in the Universe. So I would guess that Zara Land really believes we've got a hundred more good years. Yeah, he does. I mean, as I said before, we're going to have some rough patches, but he's he's really on board with having people learn and begin to wake up and, and understand who we are uh, in, in our galaxy and in our universe. And also who we are to the creator, because the more of us that can wake up and do that, the further away from those really negative timelines we're going to get. So that's, yeah. So hopefully it is good news. And it's good news for the readers because it gives you a lot of really good tools to kind of start working into your own life to make things better for yourself right at home. What's your favorite part of your book? Oh, let me think. I think the one of the favorite parts for me is where Aralam describes where he is, who he is, you know how he incarn or how he traveled back over to heaven the last time, and kind of what he did, and and he talks in that chapter also about how I determined that I was going to sort of be in his group and that he would be my teacher. That that's fun for me because it's like the story of how I ended up doing what I'm doing, which is nice. What you love doing? I do. I love doing it, and I love doing it because, like I said, there's so many happy tears, you know, and. People need more happy tears and less painful tears. And I know that sounds simple, but I believe it's true. Does Aralam talk about uh, choosing life paths and things like that? Absolutely. Yeah, he does. Um, And basically, he talks about in the book that people will come into a lifetime, and usually um, a soul will choose two or three different possible possible life paths or, or life arcs, he calls them. Um, and so you, you, and the other thing is, is that people have free will. So you can get here and just completely ignore all of your yearnings to do certain things. You can, you can ignore your intuition, you can ignore your yearnings, and you can just go about your business and do whatever. And when you get back over, you don't, it's not punitive. You know, God actually isn't punitive. I think, um, you know, Aralam talks a little bit about some of the older books of the Bible where God is very punitive, and that's really not the setup. It just is not. Um, from what I understand, it's it's not, God is not punitive. So the life path, you know, and, and oftentimes souls will choose life paths that they have failed at before. So they'll keep going at a certain style of life path until they can either overcome the challenges or become super masters at the thing that they're going to do, which is why you've been in radio from the last 150 years. <laughs> That's right. 150, but, you know, close. <laughs> Sometimes it feels like that. Right. <laughs> but you know what? I've never had one of those moments where I didn't want to come in and do it. Right, where you don't want to do it, and that's because you're doing exactly what you should be doing. Let's go to the phones. Let's start with Lou in Ohio, first-time caller. Lou, thanks for calling. Go ahead. Ah, uh, yes. Thank you, George. Sure thing. Thank you, Melissa. Um, what do you see for my future? Um, Lou, I am right now, uh, Aralam is saying to me, firstly, he's saying to me that your guide, which I didn't know if this would happen or not, and I'm going to have to make it quick because I know um, it's easy for me to talk on. So your your life guide did show up. Somebody showed up for you with Aralam just now, and I wasn't sure that that was going to happen. This this, uh, And I think it's your life guide from what Aralam is saying. His name is Leslie, and it's a, a man named Leslie. So Leslie has been trying to send you a lot of messages about what you're doing and where you're going and how your life is going. And what he's saying right now to Aralam and to me is that you have been very depressed and disappointed with the way things are going for you, but you have more time in your life. You do have a good fair amount of time and that things are going to get better. And the other thing that Aralam is saying, just to to kind of wrap this up relatively quickly, is that uh, don't let disappointments um, sort of bring you down. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, you need to really hold on to the idea that your life is going to get better because Aralim is saying it's not been great, but it is going to get better. And also through a person coming into your life, a younger person, Aralim is saying a younger woman who would be a friend of the family or 
possibly a relative of yours that you haven't seen for a long time is going to sort of show up in your life <clears throat> to kind of be a little bit of a companion for you and that person. And so don't shut them out. Errol Lamb is saying in closing, don't shut that person out because you don't need to be alone. You need to have people around you. Okay, good luck, Lou. Hope everything works out there. When you do readings, are you doing it or is Errol Lamb doing it? He's doing it, and I'm just saying what he's saying. So when I was just talking with Lou, I was listening and saying, at the kind of listening, it would be like if you were standing next to me in the room and I was talking to the other person, you were standing next to me and you're the only one that I'm the or you're, I can hear you, but no one else can hear you. So you could say, Melissa, tell him this. And you would say it out loud and I would just repeat it. And that's what I'm doing, which is a little different. That's not really the way people normally channel. But I think it's because I'm a talker. <laughs> One of our listeners doesn't have phone capabilities right now, but uh, Linda from Ontario wants to know what her financial future looks like. And she was born in 1947, if you needed that. Okay. So, Linda, and I'm listening to Erlam. Erlam is saying that in the next two and a half years, you are going to get an opportunity to change your career path. He's saying that you've worked very, very hard your whole life, and it sounds to him, from what he's saying, that you either lost a job that you really loved or you had to leave it because of physical um, ailments, um, but that in the next two years, that work that you've been doing, you're going to be able to get back with another company or another situation where you're doing that work again. And he's also saying that if you are having a situation with your back, because oftentimes people will ignore health issues. If you're having an issue with your back, you need to go to the doctor. He's saying even though you don't love doctors, you should go. Because it's not super serious, but it's going to get worse if you don't have it looked at. Next up, let's go to Eric in Salt Lake City, Utah. Welcome to the program. Hi, Eric. Hello? Yeah, go ahead, Eric. Hi, my name is Eric Klein from Salt Lake City, Utah. Long-time listener. Thank you. Uh, my wife passed away February 16th of 2022. Our anniversary is actually the 22nd, and her birthday is actually the 18th, oh, all wow. in February. Um, she had been really sick for uh, about a year because she was deathly afraid to go outside over the last couple of years when COVID was really big. Yep. Um, and I've been vaccine vaccinated because I had to be for work. Um. And she got really sick, and she started developing a cough that sounded kind of like when a cat is hacking up a fur ball. Oh. And she, her feet swelled up, and her legs started to swell up. And I came home from work, and she was so, so swollen that she was unable to get out of bed. And she had, had actually had an accident in the bed. Yeah. And I would just beg and plead with her to go to the hospital and she just would refuse to go. She wasn't going to I think she knew something was wrong and she just didn't want to, you know, deal with it or whatever because she she lived a long time with pain. She had a herniated disc in her back for years. Oh, boy. She was ready, I guess, sir, sadly. Huh? And they diagnosed after 16 weeks of, you know, me find, trying to figure out what, what happened they diagnosed her passing away as COVID-19, which I strongly disagree with. Um, when she passed away at home in our bedroom, in our bed, which I still sleep in. When I, when I found her, she was laying on her back. She had her left hand over her chest, over her heart. And she, she had passed on. And I just would like to know what exactly happened because i do not agree with covid 19 at all okay um Errol lamb is saying to me right now firstly that she did pass over quickly so she did not suffer um she did pass over quickly and her guide did meet her she is right now her soul is in that rest period that i had talked about and um if you want to give um, the producers your name and information I can keep an ear out for her, meaning I can have Erlam wait to see when she comes out. If you'd like to do that, I'll do that for you. Um, secondarily, she did have heart failure. <clears throat> he's saying that her heart stopped. And he's also saying that she had a myriad of different problems all together, meaning 
two or three or four things were all coming together for her. She, he's saying that she probably should have gone to the hospital, but this particular exit time, because souls were put into their lifetimes, um, two or three different places where this would be an okay time to leave. And so she was just very tired. And Erlam is saying that, the other thing he's saying is that you should not be feeling guilt about this, that you did what you could do. And he's saying, you know, free will. She has the free will to choose. And because of that, you, you could only do what you could do. And so you did everything you could do. Um, and free will. She has the free will to determine that she doesn't want to go to the doctor. Now, that doesn't make it right necessarily for you, but she does have that free will to do it. And this was one of her possibility arcs for when she would leave the life. But she is in rest, so she did come right over. She didn't, she didn't dally. There was no, no problem with her coming right over, and she was met by her guide, and she is now in that resting phase. And Erlam is telling me right now he thinks that within the next three to four months on Earth time, because time on the other side is a little bit different, um, but in the next three to four and a half months that she'll be coming out of her uh, rest mode. And at that point, if, like I said, if you would like, um, I can go ahead and uh, get back with you um, if she wants to come and talk to Erlam and you. Okay, we'll get his number for you. Yeah, Melissa. do that. And uh, Tom will pass it on to you. Next up, let's go to Super in Los Angeles. Boy, your name's been coming up all week. Hi, Super. <laughs> Super? Super is your name? You That's know? awesome. How are you? <laughs> I'm great. I, I just want to know about if Melissa uh, can send a message from my my sweet cheeks, my honey, you passed in 2018 from Louis Body Dementia, which is the same thing that Robin Williams had at Parkinson's and dementia together and unfortunately because of really complicated legal issues i couldn't be by his bedside when he died oh, right let me tell you something super firstly i love that that name um secondarily Erlam is saying to me right now and he's he's touching sometimes i mean Erlam speaks to me i hear words but sometimes he will t you know give me a, a hand signal and things and he's touching his chest and saying that your loved one absolutely knew that you were thinking of him and that you loved him and that there was no, the fact that you couldn't be there was not, nothing negative from that. So you don't have to feel badly that you weren't there. Um, and then secondarily, um, that disease that he died from was his choice. He had chosen that in this lifetime. And again, I, it's hard to say that sometimes because people feel like, why on earth would a soul choose that? But he did a phenomenal job. Erlam is telling me right now that um, when he's looking out kind of over his kind of just record quickly, because we're doing this quickly, um, that he actually did a phenomenal job of, of learning and doing what he needed to do within that disease. So he came over and he's in the rest period, which people who die with diseases like that oftentimes go into that rest period that can last a month, a day, a week. It just depends on them. They get to come out of it. But he knew, Erlen is saying he absolutely knew that you were with him and spirit and soul and loved him and the feeling was mutual how about that so super super john from wisconsin was talking about you at the pat boone event yeah i had a, I had a good time with him and tanya it was wonderful you had fun huh yes yes good. did you thank have, you that, so much did that help at all super yeah it's always is he my is he going to be my spirit guide? Is he my, going to be my guardian angel? You know, I, I don't, well, he wouldn't be an angel. Um, he, he could actually, well, no, he, Erlam is saying no, um, because you already have a spirit guide. So, and the other thing is, um, super, Erlam is saying now that you are a person who really could be in connection with your spirit guide. So you should be working on that a little bit. Thanks, super. Uh, next up, Amanda's in Flagstaff, Arizona. Welcome to the show. Hello, Amanda. Hello. Hi. How are you? Great. What's your question? Um, I had recently lost, um, actually, I, I say he's the love of my life, and I miss him dearly. Um, I've been kind of lost without him. And I, um, I don't know, is he okay? How's he doing? Is, I mean, yeah. Amanda, can you give me his first name? Because... He's not standing right here with Erlam, but if you just give me his first name, no last names, just his first name, 
I can, Erlam can quickly see if he can sort of sort him out and find him. Right. Jarrett? Jarrett? Yes. Okay. So Erlam is saying that he did indeed, he did successfully pass over. Now, um, he's telling me, too, that he was met by his um, guide and that he is not in a state of rest, but that he is sort of out traveling right now. But the other thing that Erlam is telling me, which, and this is something that happens a lot, is that he very often, once every couple of days in your time, comes and, and is with you. So if you are seeing a lot of, and obviously, you know, if you've lost him, then you're going to be, you're going to be focused on the things that make, you know, make you think of him. But Erlam is telling me that once every couple of days, he is coming to you, sort of putting things in your path, right, so that you think of him. He does, he is coming to you to check on you. So the, the, the thing that Erlam is telling me about this is that you are suffering so, so much. And what you need to do, if you can, is start to talk to him right out loud and say, I know, I know that you're well. I know that you passed over. You know that I love you, and I'm just trying to heal. You need to kind of let him know out loud that you're, that you're going to heal from this and that you know he's fine, because that will help him on the other side. Does Aralam ever not give you the information you're looking for, Melissa? You know, the only time um, that Aralam will I mean, there have been occasions where Aralam will say, I cannot tell you that, meaning he doesn't have he, – because if he's going to tell me a piece of information that would impact someone's free will or somebody's choice in a life decision, meaning if it's a really important – if somebody came to me and said, you know, I don't know whether to get treatment for this illness, Aralam might not be able to tell them yay or nay to that because it might be part of their life that is so important that they need to make the decision. So sometimes he'll say, but, but rarely. It doesn't happen a lot. It doesn't happen a lot. It's also funny, too, because people will say, do you ever ask him for lottery numbers or things like that? And it's really funny. When I was much younger, I would say to him, why can't you give me lottery numbers? Why can't you do something like that? He would just roll his eyes at me like, that isn't, that's not what this is about. Uh-huh. So, yeah. But he doesn't, rarely does he not have anything to say. And if he really doesn't know, he'll say to get a, someone's information, or he'll come back to me months later or days later sometimes and give me more information on that person. Tell me the significance of the eye on the cover of Being Humans with all the electricity around it. Um, you know, the, that was um, designed with some folks, and the, basically it's just because the human eye is the uh, window to the soul, right? So you look into somebody's eyes, and there, there's that adage about um, it being the window to the soul, and the book is about souls, basically. The whole book is about being humans with a soul and the learning process with that. So that that's what that was about. And you wrote the book last year, right? Uh, yeah, I actually wrote the book, and I pub- it got published in uh, November. And it's been doing very well, considering that I had not published a book before. It's been doing well enough, and I've been on a couple of podcasts that if you if your listeners go to Amazon right this second— it may say temporarily out of stock. So, uh, and I want to throw this in from my website. If you go to my website, there's also a button on there that says Book Baby. And if you go to Book Baby, they'll sell it to you right then, and you'll get it in just a couple of days. Super. Melissa, we're going to take a short break and then come back with final phone calls with you in just a moment on Coast to Coast AM. Melissa Gates Perry, the name of her book, Being Humans, that's all about us. We'll be back in a moment. On our next Coast to Coast program... Ken Grunbach joins us to talk about changing demographics and how they're going to affect the world. And later on, William Warwick joins us to talk about the military and 50 years of encounters with UFOs on Coast to Coast. And welcome back to Coast to Coast. George Norrie with you along with Melissa Gates Perry. Melissa, thank you for being on the program, by the way. This is your first time, isn't it? It is my first time, and I am so grateful to be on the program. Like I said, I'm a longtime listener and a member of the Coast to Coast website and all of that. And I listen every day. I'm a, I'm a, a hardcore fan. Um, but also, I'm just so grateful to be able to talk with you because you're just a phenomenal human. And uh, you have a great big soul. And Aralam was giving me the thumbs up as I was saying you were a phenomenal human. The other thing <laughs> I want to get in here really quickly is that Aralam tells me about you, that you personally, that there are a lot of souls in the radio business who have passed over prior to you and all of them sort of keep tabs on what you're doing, and everybody's kind of giving you a thumbs up. So oh, that's great. Yeah, isn't that kind of cool? And, and it's interesting because 
you know, none of them are standing here at this moment, but he said there's a kind of a consensus with all of your, you know, the, the, that, uh, the folks that have, that have been in radio and the people that you admire and all of that. So they're kind of watching and really, really behind what you're doing. So that's, that's nice for you because that helps you as well. Thanks, Melissa. Let's take final calls for you. We'll go to Maria in Illinois. Welcome to the program. Hi, Maria. Hi. Thank you so much for taking my call. Sure. Um, I wanted a reading, but I did have a couple of real quick questions. Sure. Okay. Before the reading. Um, a couple of questions before that. So um, if you totally love, 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 love your animal more than anything else in this world, um, mine's still alive, thankfully, but... Um, if, when they do go, if they do go, can they ever reincarnate and come back to you? Or yes, do people, they do. Do people ever reincarnate as your pet? Um, no. Uh, human souls and souls that go into any type of biological bodies don't come into animals. But animals, like your animal that you love, do you have a dog? Yes, Jasper, yeah. he's a rat. So your dog, one dog, can reincarnate into the next puppy that you get or the next dog that you get that does happen um it can happen and but either way when you cross back over your animal will be there if that animal has gone before you okay um my second question before reading is um well basically can somebody be in your spam in your soul pod like can it be somebody that you're totally, you're crazy about on earth, but it was unrequited and you were, they were only in your life for a short time and then they've moved on? Could they, is it possible they could be in your soul family or no? Absolutely. Absolutely. That happens a lot. And the first, uh, there's a two part answer to that. Aralem is saying, absolutely. That happens a lot because if it was, if it was unrequited, think about the lessons that you're going to be learning through that. Through that difficulty, you have the opportunity to learn some big lessons. And so then secondarily, um, you would have made a decision with that person to come into the lifetime in exactly the way that that lifetime went between you. So yes, and Aralam is also saying that the person that you are referring to is in your life pod. And your soul pod is about 22 souls that are traveling around in your group together back and forth through lifetimes. So your soul group is a pretty good-sized group, and that would be one of the reasons why this kind of a lifetime situation could happen, because there's quite a few of you. Even though he's with somebody else? And now what, hon? I'm sorry. Even though he's with someone else? Yes. Yeah. Yep. That could be. Felt like maybe they were soulmates and... I'm not, but I was crazy about him, and I still think of him to this day. But then, um, so the basic reading that I was talking about is my life has been really horrific in the last three years. Um, I was in a couple of car accidents a year and a half ago. Um, I've been without a car for a year and a half, and I'm desperately looking for another one. I, I've been trapped in my home for the last year and a half. I haven't been able to go anywhere, and I've always loved to travel, and I haven't even been able to do the things that I needed to do, and I'm desperate for another vehicle. Um, and I'm just wondering, will I ever get another vehicle, and will things ever get better for me in general because they've been really horrible in the last three years of my life? Okay, so Aralam is saying to me, and he's trying to make this concise because that's a lot of questions. He's saying absolutely things are going to be getting better for you. You're looking at about a six- to eight-month period of time where things are going to start to turn around pretty quickly. The, the, the horrific car accidents and the things that have happened to you, those things you came into this life to experience sort of in the first half of your life. And now what you're meant to be doing is, and he's saying, you're meant to sort of start to emotionally and psychologically Dismantle all of those things. Look at how they affected you because the second half of your life is going to be much, much better, okay? So as far as, and now he's saying as far as the car goes, he believes that in the next probably three or four weeks even that you should start reaching out to family. Even He's saying even family that you've been estranged from because one of the biggest lessons for you is that you need to bring all of your people back into your life. So if you've been alone 
and a bit estranged from the people that are close to you. You need to you need to reach out and bring them back in. And he's saying, even if you feel that they wronged you, you are going to need to start to sort of reach out and heal those wounds. And here's the thing that I'll tell you, and he's saying this to me too, you know, the, the biggest souls on the planet are the ones that can overcome that kind of, of difficult situation and those difficult um, emotional bonds that you have with people in your family. If you start to overcome that stuff, you change it for your whole group. You, you get the whole group healing. And that's one of the things in the book that's so amazing. So Errol M. is saying that. So this is good for you. You're going to be making a, a turnaround here. It's not going to stay like it was. All right. Good luck, Maria. And uh, let us know how things transpire for you. Let's go to Gary in Yuba City, California, west of the Rockies. Hi, Gary. Thank you, George, for having me on. Thank you. Thanks for holding so long. Oh, no worries. No worries. Um, I had a question for Melissa. Okay. Absolutely, uh, Gary. I um, never knew my birth father. And I was wondering if there's anything, any way you could reach out and see what um, anything he has to say to me or what kind of uh, advice he could give me for my future. What was his name, Gary? Gary. Gary. His name was Gary, too? Well. Thank you, George, for asking the name. Okay. So you've, you've taught me well, Melissa. I know, I know, right? So Errol Am is saying about your dad, um, firstly, he doesn't have him right here. He's not right here. But he's reaching out right now sort of into the information that he can get. He is saying that your dad, um, the, the idea that you didn't really have a relationship with him had nothing to do with your dad not wanting you. So if you've been dealing with feelings of sort of abandonment, I'm not good enough, that kind of stuff, that was never the, the issue with your dad. The other thing about him, Erlam is saying that he was meant, you and he, uh, made a soul contract that this is the way you would come in together because you're meant to start to overcome this stuff. Um, Erlam is also um, saying that he can send at, he'll Erlam will send out for your dad's soul guide in this last life to find out uh, where he is now. But Erlam is also saying right now that he thinks your dad has reincarnated back into your extended family unit. Is there anybody in your family? Uh, and it could be cousins, it could be your children, it could be anybody. Are there any new babies in your family? Because Erlam is saying that he believes that your father, your real birth father, has now reincarnated back into your group on the planet, which happens a lot, which is actually a really great now, thing. He passed away when I was two. Two right. years old. But is there anybody now in your family who's recently had a child or, or some of the youngest children in your family? Because Erlam says that he incarnated back into your group? Um, my sister had two daughters and another one um, adopted several others. Okay. So one of those two daughters, um, Errol Am is saying, is most likely the soul of your dad, your, your biological father, come back around to be in your life. So if you feel very close to one of them, um, that's probably why. And, th and this happened, Errol Am is saying, this happens a lot where souls will come back in because otherwise that's, that's how it keeps rolling, right? That's Do they feel guilty? That's why they come back? Um, you know, normally it's not about guilt, um, George. Usually what it is is they make a contract and say, you know, like Gary's dad would have made a contract with him. I'm going to come in and then I'm going to die when you're two, so you won't know me. So you're going to have to deal with that challenge. That Because, you know, if you don't know your father... You're going to have challenges around abandonment and what was he like. Oh, and all absolutely. Kind of Which is right? only natural. Yeah, it's natural, exactly. And so, but the thing that, that, his, that his dad would have come back and then said, you know, when I get the opportunity, I want to come back into this group again because then, you know, that's how it works over there. And so the, the, the really um, phenomenal growth piece of this, Gary, would be that, you know, you can start to look at this in such a way that your dad – um, you know, loved you. He didn't leave you for any reason other than that, um, you know, that was part of your soul soul contract with him. Um, but it's very interesting that he's come back into one of those um, young girls because, um, you, you know, and you may, like I said, you may feel an affinity for one of them in a way where you sort of recognize because people do that sometimes. And, you know, George, you've heard about stories in India where a baby will be born and, and that baby will start saying to its parents, 
I used to live in a town, you know, three towns over, and my name was this. Yeah, right? exactly. And that happens occasionally. So that's actually a really huge blessing, Gary. That's a really, really good thing. Let's go to Kathleen in Scranton, Pennsylvania, east of the Rockies. Welcome, Kathleen. Go ahead. Hi, um, Melissa. Hello, I'd like Kathleen. to ask him. Um, I, I, I had an argument 15, 20 years ago with a family member. And somehow or another, it ended up in some type of um, legal issue with another state. And I was not notified or, you know, process served or anything. And it came to an intention recently. And um, I wrote a letter today, and I wanted to know if... um, I'll be exonerated. It was an argument with a family member who no longer lives in that state, and I've not lived in that state for 20-plus years. And the family member has not lived in that state for over a decade. Was it an argument over an estate, Kathleen? Well, somebody did die and money was taken, and, yeah like that and it was an argument and I don't know why it ended up legally <laughs> so you so you you're asking if uh, the legalese is going to work out or what yeah I wrote the letter to the commonwealth attorney uh, in another state do you have a lawyer on this too no I just wrote it out myself she told me to when I called the office of this commonwealth I called, and they said, just write a letter. You know, there was no process of service. All right, well, put your psychic hat on, Melissa. What do you think of this one? So, so actually, Erlam is saying right now that, um, firstly, um, he's saying basically that he also believes that this will probably not go any further. Um, Of course, Erlam is not an attorney, nor am I. Um, but he is saying that he doesn't, he doesn't feel like this is going to come back on you in any difficult way. Um, are you, he's asking me right now if you're in, are you still um, in contact with the family member that was involved in this? No, and they haven't been since, and there was no argument since, and there was never any threat. Nothing, right. Melissa. But you haven't been, you, you're not in contact with this family member? No, not at all. Okay, because Erlam and this family member, Erlam is saying this family member is still living. Yes. yes. Yep. Yep. So Erlam is saying that the best thing that you could do is try to contact this family member and try to make this right with them however you can do that because you don't want to cross back over at the end of your life and have to deal with whatever this is between you. And Erlam is really, really big always about trying to get um, family souls, people that are in the same families, to, to work things out, even if it's difficult and even if it was very difficult at the time. And he's saying also the reason this is coming back up out of the blue sort of is a prompt, okay? So this is a prompt for you to do something about this relationship. Why is money always an issue with the uh, people, Melissa? Oh, it's, it, it just it, – because basically, you know, we and Erlam is saying – Humans have been in this system, this monetary system, for a very long time, obviously. We were put in this monetary system. And so our survival always, you know, counts on the monetary system. And so it really, you know, everyone needs money. I'm not saying that everyone doesn't need money. We all need money to live. But money does create a... it creates a situation where you oftentimes can't lead with your soul. That's so true. Tensions all the time. Melissa, thanks for being on the program. Keep in touch with us, if you would. For Dan Galanti, Tom Danheiser, Lisa Lyon, Lux Lonehead, Sean LaDesour, Stephanie Smith, Chris Burroughs, Tim Benal, George Knapp, and Ian Punnett, I'm George Norrie, somewhere out there on Coast to Coast AM. We'll see you on our next edition. Until then, be safe, everyone.